In this segment, I'm going to show you a very simple electronics project on how to interface console controllers into your PC. Now, when I mean console, it's mostly the older stuff, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Atari, TurboGrafx-16, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and Xbox. However, in this segment, I'm going to be using Super Nintendo because I love Super Nintendo controllers. They're small, they're easy to interface. Um, some of the tools that, were, that are going to be required are um, wire cutters, needle nose pliers, soldering iron, solder. Um, I actually put a rubber band around a pair of large needle nose pliers to help as a second, like helping hand, because not everyone has uh, someone to hold all the parts and components for them. Um, the components that we're going to need is a 25 pin printer port connector. Um, this one's actually used, so it's not, not in the best condition, but just bear with me. Small signal diodes. Um, for this, uh, for Super Nintendo, we need five. Um, some paper clips, straightened out, of course. And um, a hood. And some wire. The wire I've already stripped and pre tinned because uh, uh, I'm pretty sure most of us don't find, you know, stripping and tinning wire very fun. The first thing we're going to have to do is get our printer port all ready. So what we're going to do is we need to go and solder diodes into the appropriate places on the printer port. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line all of these up and I'm going to trim them down because we don't need wires or leads this long. Now, if you saw episode 2 of, of, of BSOD, You'll, you'll know that diodes are one-way gates for electricity. And you can't hook them up backwards. So the number one thing with this project, if you're having problems, make sure that your diodes aren't hooked up backwards. I mean, it's a common, a common problem in such a simple, uh, simple schematic. Now, our schematic says that we have to put a diode on pins 5 through 9. So, let me see if I can get this closer towards towards the screen. Let's see, pin 1, 2, 3. Well, this one's a little dirty, so I'm just going to clean this up real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, there's pin 5. Here's our diode. These things are actually called solder cups um, because they're just little cups that hold solder. Hence the word solder cup. Um, I've already filled most of these up in a previous project with solder. And as you can see, soldering them in is relatively simple. Um, I just can't get in a good position to show you soldering them in. <laughs> there we go. That's a decent position. Remember to remember. Make sure the orientation of your diodes are correct. If they're backwards, it won't work. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, pin eight. If you, you can't get um these these diodes from from your local support by plus part supply shop. You can pull them out of like a telephone, a stereo, a radio, um, pretty much anything. I mean, small signal diodes are literally in every piece of electronics. And uh, the first time I actually did this years and years and years ago, I used diodes that were actually pulled out of an old telephone. It worked just fine. Those are soldered in. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to take one of these legs and we're just going to bend it across because all of these up here have to be connected. And then we're just going to come by with our iron, heat up the, uh, the last one first because this is actually going to be the loosest pin. And then just go across with a little bit of solder, solder down. All these little legs. You know, 
don't have to be super neat, just make sure it all sticks. There we go. And with the wire cutters, we're just going to trim them off all the extra. Okay, that's soldered up. Now we have to go and make our connector for the actual game port. This is where a little bit of, of skill comes in. I'll give you some tips and I'll give you some advice, but really it's just going to be something you're going to have to work on. Um, what you're going to want to do is take a paper clip and just jam it inside the connector. Okay? And then you trim off your extra. Okay? And then you're going to take your needle nose pliers and you're going to make something called an eyelet or an eye hole. And so you create something like, like that. And that is so your solder has a place to flow into because soldering onto a slick, thin piece of, of metal like this is just a pain in the ass. So we need to make five of these. Also, another quick tip. Notice how this isn't perfectly straight. This is all wiggly and not good. Um, cut this off because it has to actually slide into the... Um, into into the connector. You can either cut it off here or cut it off a little bit long and then just use this part for the eyelet. And that is what I'm going to do. And we need to make five of these. Okay, we've got five of them made, and if you notice, they're all different sizes. It really doesn't matter because later on they're all going to be cut down to the same size anyway. Um, something else I like to do, if you um, in our schematic, we don't need to use uh, two of these pins right here. And it's going to have a significant gap from here to here inside the, um, inside the shell when we make the, the hood or the, uh, the connector. And what I like to do is I like to just go and take a piece of spare, spare craptastic paper clip and then just make a little jumper. So that way uh, when you're actually uh, using material to create the, uh, the connector hood, it has something that to support it. Okay, now we just have to start inserting all of our pins to make sure that they all go in. Okay, we've got all the pins in and, you know, it looks ugly as all sin. So, um, I'm actually going to shave this one down because it's way too long, but uh, usually you don't have to wait to the actual end of this process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all, all of these out, and then using my needle nose pliers, or just my hands, I'm going to try to put a little bit of solder in each one of these little eyelets. Okay, all of them are now soldered, and we have to just solder our wires in. Now, that's usually easier said than done, especially if you're not very good with a soldering iron. Now, um, all of these wires have been pre-tinned to make things just a little bit easier, and that's always a good idea. Pre-tin all of your wires. I'm going to use this end, these longer end, 
for the for the printer port end. And I'm going to use these shorter ends for the little eyes. And I'm just going to go ahead and it's kind of like threading a needle. Just like so. And I'm going to do this for every single one of them. All of the wires have been soldered in now, but if you notice, there's a little bit of extra wire. Snip off this little extra wire because when you put all these connectors, they all these pins into the connector itself, they have a high risk of being shorted out, and that's not good. Try to get as close into the actual metal as possible. Okay, and we got all of our pins and we will just plug them into appropriate spots on the controller. Notice how we have a few um, relatively uneven ones. That's not a bad thing. However, like this one right here, that's in, like really long. Try to shave it down so they're relatively the same length. It doesn't have to be an exact science, but try to get them as close as possible. Having them uneven is actually a good thing because then they run uh, less of a chance of actually shorting out by uh, kind of like moving over to the sides and shorting out. Okay. Now that we have this assembled, let's go back to our other end. Now, you have to keep in mind that there is a color code here, and that, you know, there is a pin numbering, like this, I believe, is pin 1 right here. And this would be pin 2, pin 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, these have corresponding, corresponding pins. And these wires are attached to those pins, and you have to know what's going where. You can't just slap anything anywhere figuring, oh, I know what I'm doing. So, I'm going to go and solder... According to the, the, the schematic that's provided, I'm going to solder these to the appropriate place on the printer port connector. So here we go with that one. As you can see, everything's soldered in over here, and everything's all hooked up over here. Now what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to try to verify that all of this works before uh, piecing together a hood for here and the 